This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. The next question is, <clears throat> is it commendable... Um, is, a, is it a commendable act to frequently perform Umrah and visit the Prophet ﷺ? Some people criticize this because they say that the money could be better spent on the poor. And uh, as an add-on uh, for our information, there will be no burden financially to perform it again. Performing multiple Umrahs, they, they say the Abwabu nafli wasi'a, the door of voluntary acts is wide, right? is wide. Allah SWT says, وَفْعَلُوا الْخَيْرَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Do the good so that you may attain felicity. And Allah facilitates different acts of good for different people. Right? Um, and giving in charity is, yeah, there, there's an obligatory charity due upon you, which is your zakat. And you need to be concerned about the poor and the needy in general. But, Charity above and beyond zakat is recommended, highly praiseworthy. What you do with your discretionary wealth above and beyond what Allah has made incumbent upon you religiously, you know, zakat and, and, and so on, and socially in terms of how much you are expected to support your spouse, your children, if you know, parents, if that be the case. Above and beyond that, how you spend your money is your call, as long as you're not wasteful, for example. And that's why sometimes people go into a little too much philosophy, right? that you cannot do this. And they say, لا إجابة إلا بالشرع. Nothing is incumbent except if Allah has made it incumbent. So if Allah has blessed someone with money, and they want to do Umrah every, every other month, it's up to them. If someone has a lot of money, if they've done their obligatory hajj, and they want to go to the top 100 mountain peaks in the world, and say Allahu Akbar from every mountain peak, it's up to them. Anything haram about that? No. Right? And we don't go into this, rad, you know, and that's why, you know, the, the part of the mercy of the Sharia is that it gives us levels of religious rulings. Few things have been made obligatory for us, personally and socially. If we fulfill those, then what you do is up to you. Not everyone has to do what's best. Right? And of course, one, the better thing to do is to look at where will there be the greatest benefit. And to strive as best one can to be of benefit to others and of being of benefit to oneself. But in short, there's nothing wrong with performing multiple umrahs. But in these things, a practical consideration is, is to consult. It, it, it's a good practice to consult. That, okay, I have wealth. How could I best allocate it in a manner that will be most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And usually, what we see from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the spirit of what we mentioned about giving everyone who has a right, their due right, is to give a little, you know, is to... Direct some towards you know, religious acts, something towards religious causes, some to support the poor, and to spread one's charity and one's spending on good across the various areas of good. Wallahu alam. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.